welcome to vlog number two. So we're just going to jump straight in at my case study at Ashford Designer Outlet. So this is MacArthur Glen's Ashford Designer Outlet. Um, quite a recent development, opened in November of 2019, approved by Ashford Borough Council and designed by Chapman Taylor and Applied Landscape Design. The idea was to reflect on the Garden of England by introducing living green walls, planters and creating an overall vegetated retail space. The design focuses on how people use the space and looks at how to enhance that experience by introducing new event spaces, play areas, food courts and better places to sit and rest in between shopping. All this information and photos that you see here are from Chapman Taylor official website which I'll link at the bottom of this video if you would like to check out further. So here is my site visit. Uh, unfortunately I could only go at night time but I think it was quite nice that I did that in the end because we're able to do, see a reflection of the development at, throughout different types of the day so I think that was really great. So the reason why I chose this as a case study is because Ashford Designer out there is predominantly leisure and retail similar to the Hedro, which is my site. And I wanted to see how they design better for people and the environment. And I think they've achieved this very well, even just by introducing new vegetation um, and introducing more event space, it's really brought the place alive. Walking through the site, um, they've really played on lights um, and how it almost embellishes the vegetation and emphasises it. And I think that's a great feature to pick up on. I noticed that they really focused on space, um, putting small blocks of seating um, a fair distance from each other and still having enough space for people to congregate um, and walk around uh, without feeling too congested. I think this is a brilliant development, very successful, and it's completely transformed the place. Um, and I'd love to take bits from this development and put it towards my design into creating a better space for people within retail. Hiya, yeah. so right now I'm just collating some of my data, some of my research into a digital sketchbook. Um, and I'm also putting some of that information into site analysis maps. And what that does, um, basically diagrams that um, explain the written research that I found in just an easier format so when I'm designing I don't have to constantly refer to pages and pages of work and also when presenting to others it's easier for people to understand why you've done what you've done so yeah I'm just going to do that for the rest of the night and I'll see you tomorrow so moving on from this I created two A1 sheets which explain my first initial thoughts and ideas and concepts and I'll explain why I've got to these conclusions through my site analysis research. My title is the Hedro Revolutionised, so I chose the Hedro as I felt that, it, um, well when I did my dissertation, when I did several um, readings of pollution and stuff, I tried off the parks, traffic to areas, um, pedestrian eye zones, and out of all of them, the hedgerow was where it was most polluted. Um, so I thought that was a key place to look at. And also, it's the heart, pretty much the heart of the city centre where everything branches off onto. So that's where everything congregates. Mm -hmm. So um, it affects people's health. Um, so I stuck just a little bit introduction of the hedgerow. It's about 700 metres long. Um, it is the most important through fares in central Leeds in many of the city's civic and central buildings. Um, it's predominantly uh, retail and leisure um, and within, if I go down a little bit, within um, 5, 10 or 15 minute radius, well, 
more than 10 minute radius, it starts to go into more educational and office type um, places. So I want to look at four main uh, parts of the site. So I looked at built form and green space. Um, and as we can see here, there isn't too much green space surrounding, but um, I was excited to consider how I could link the two nearest green spaces to the mm -hmm. hedgerow itself. I also looked at the uses of um, the site so I could better utilise the site. And then I looked at the public transport and how we could get into the site. Um, as we can see, there is several, well, it's a bit difficult because of blurry, but um, there's several bus stops um, congregated in this area, so it's easy to get to. There's a train station there, and there is still a lot of cars in the area that you can still drive in, even though they have tried to strip back on that and uh, include mainly buses. But then we fell to this problem where when I went on a site visit, there was eight buses at one intersection, um, which, yes, it's taking away cars, but also having that many buses up in, at one place at one time still creates the same issue. Um, so I began starting to think how I could in, still incorporate buses, but in a more safer way. Um, so I started to look at road traffic. So in the hedgerow, um, directly in the hedgerow, there's very heavy traffic, but just slightly out within five minutes radius, um, there's very light traffic. So I started to think about how I could push that traffic out so it's more of a balanced traffic, but still uh, enables me to reach the hedgerow quite easily, an easy commute, and no more than a five minute walk from their bus from that point onwards. I also want to look at religion because when talking to uh, Leeds, we listening to Leeds City Council, they wanted to make it more of a cultural space. I think that was important, so I think we need to consider all the types of religions and stuff and how we can better um, bring the community together of all cultures. We looked at the age groups in the postcode. Um, if it's student dominated, then I can, which I found between 20s and 30s, around that age, um, I can better cater to them, but also not exclude the others, but focus more towards them. Um, so then I did a site visit, and these are the four main big problems that I found. So like I mentioned, there's too many buses at one place. Uh, Dormant Square, um, it was, it's a big square uh, for what it is, but, uh, and people use the benches, but only for like, no more than two minutes just to resort out their bag and stuff like that but didn't want to sit there and enjoy the space. Appreciated because of the placement of the statue so I think reorganisation of the space um, will probably uh, bring in a lot more people to the space. Um, I also noticed that a lot of benches were facing the wall which if I was sitting there on the bench I wouldn't, wouldn't really want to look at a wall. Um, but also I noticed that if there was a traffic collision, then that would be quite dangerous for users on the bench. Um, so then I just did a, this is just a representation of my site visit. Um, I've included some of my sketches of the site visit um, and I wanted to show the topography um, of the site. Um, so it gradually, from the, uh, for the hall and the gallery, it was quite, it was around about 20, 35 sorry, metres and it gradually sloped up um, to the end of the hedgerow to about 50 metres. I want to talk about the community voice, the main things they focused on, uh, what they want to improve in the site is health and wellbeing and increased biodiversity, community engaging and net zero aim. Um, the aim is to get net zero by 2030, um, but currently they're expected to exceed their budget by 2029. So um, I 
think it needs to be uh, very focused on creating green space. Um, so I wanted to show my concept visual. Um, I went and did a case study at Ashford Outlet down south and it's predominantly retail and I, um, the gallery um, and I thought it might be nice to add installations but there also is a memorial there uh, for Remembrance Day so I looked at the London Memorial and I thought that um, to create a concept that has art leading up to the gallery so it has the emphasis on the uh, art gallery but also ha doesn't take away from the memorial that's there so a play on the two um, because there has been current uh, art installations there but they haven't they've kind of taken the attention away from the remembrance and I think that's quite important to celebrate it's almost like a one-way system so that there isn't buses at the same space at the same time to create a one-way system is constantly moving and they're not facing one another um, so I wanted to begin to push them out and then introduce cycle routes. I then wanted to do follow on um, and link the two green spaces, so almost create a pedestrianised and cycle route with green infrastructure and a space for people to sit and just enjoy the space. Uh, the next phase was to, um, so right here is St John's shopping mall but it's currently used as a car park and if I want to push cars and buses out of the site um, right beside it is a garden but I thought maybe introduce that as a roof garden maybe um, and then one by one each leg of the spider um, new evaluation on green space can be looked into. Gosh that was quite the presentation to watch through but hopefully um, you was able to see from that little snippets of sort of my thought, initial thought process and what my concept idea is going forward. But from that, I had a discussion with my lecturer and had some redevelopment of my ideas on my own. Um, basically, because originally I was thinking about creating a one-way system around the hedgerow. Um, but after rethinking, I thought maybe this isn't such a great idea and maybe keep the bus routes but maybe influence people with other ways of transport like cycling or walking um it'd probably be best to not completely eradicating the bus routes as it is a direct route to the main city bus station so that's the way going forward um so here is me and my lecturer discussing this this is the shape of their skin so they're starting it from well, we did discuss the, the use in Princess Park, yeah, and there are around the back and the church, yeah. So they're trying to are they incorporate in the church in there. Um, they've already done them finally there, but that's very green too. And we're talking yeah. about spreading up and what's linking with Little Park, yeah. What's the reason and they're also for that? With uh, Cookridge Street, which I was considering anyway, Cookridge Street. So their recent development that they've just done uh, here, so they've made that all green um, next to the... Oh, right, yes, the gallery. Yes. And the box. Right. Because um, I want, I feel like along here, and I was also considering here, there's a little park there, but there's a, um, a car park there, I can't remember what it's called, but if I was to... Uh. I think it's St John's. Yeah, St mm -hmm. John's. If I was to push out the traffic, obviously in a phasing mm -hmm. way, um, they would not necessarily need to have a car park there. Might be parking for, say, deliveries, but not like a major car park for um, things. So I was thinking maybe um, put a roof garden on there. Because you've still got but two I lanes. I still quite like how they've pushed out the pedestrianised. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe you show routeways where Safer uses. Um, is it the council who set this strategy up about linking from there sure. to there? Yeah, Lee City Council. Right. Do you reckon, would you say maybe have it that way and then push up there and go that way? Yes. I, I, do, I, do, I feel that you can stop some traffic and you can, I think it's more manageable. Yeah. Uh, and you're changing, what, what happens, it's very linear, so you're always looking that 
direction. So mm. you're always constantly going through a linear street. But if this break off, um, you know, you break off always into different direction. You break into the north always. Never mm. the south says shopping and there's no space for green space yeah, to yeah. stop because you're busy. So it seems the south. So if if the plan was to go to Little Park, you're moving south to get the green and the north to get the shopping and then mm. you have to go through all the shopping districts and it's pedestrian so it is people friendly and it's hundreds on a Saturday so there's no place to stop I was saying to Jordan before and it's then you skip and you move down into the calls and it starts to slow down and you've got the new air park to the south of the river so you can't have green everywhere yeah. um, but you can start making big chunks and yeah, linkages yeah. And so I think I'm just going to conclude this video here. Thank you so much for watching again. Um, next week, I'm going to show how I've developed these ideas and got more of a detailed master plan going ahead. Um, so looking forward to seeing you next week and thank you again. <laughs>